Welcome to Wisconsin Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. And today, this is my Friday segment that is going to be, I guess, coined or termed Battle of the Bottles. I have 20 random samples in this selection of the bottles that I'm going to be battling. And the two of them that I have here were randomly selected out of those 20 samples. I'm going to pour them, nose them, taste them, and see if I can guess what the bottles are. And then I'm going to let you know which one I like the most. And I have them labeled on the bottom just so I can keep it straight after the battle is over. I'm not necessarily, holy cow, <laughs> these are peated. I can already smell them. Now I am at a little bit of an advantage when I'm gonna guess the bottles because I'm the person that is selecting the samples. And I know for a fact, I only have three peated whiskeys that are in there. So this is gonna be interesting to see if I can actually guess which one they are. I have Scotch, I have American, I have Japanese peated whiskeys in the sample pool. So let me go ahead and nose them both, taste them both, and then see which one I like the most. I'm gonna start on my left and then go to my right. All right, that is a fruity peat. Crisp pineapple, very subtle underlying amount of peat some vanilla. Boy, that one smells really good. Let me get to the nose on this one. All right, this is much more heavily peated. I wouldn't say heavy peat, but there is more peat on the nose with this one than that one. This has an ashy peated note. This has more of a savory meat, smoked meat peat, which I think I have an idea already what they are. Yeah, I have fruit, peat. There is a crisp pear and apple note in this. My initial thought right now, I like the nose of this one more than this one, but they both are very crisp. That explodes out of the glass. Let's get this on the palate, see what it's all about. Vanilla up front, a little bit of spice, underlying notes of peat that savory, meaty, smoked meat, peat. ABV is rising a little bit. I would say light fruit peat on this one. Let's go and get the second one on the palate. See how this one compares. Oh man, that is good too. Apple and pear with a grilled pineapple. Ashy peat, borderline campfire. I wouldn't put this into the Band-Aid and iodine peat note. It's heading more towards this one, but it has a good amount of sweetness, ashy campfire, almost like you have smoke in your clothing after the campfire or the next day. This is good. All right, this is also good. I'm pretty sure I am definite with what they are. And obviously you know as well, and I, throughout the entire video, I have it down here. So you have an idea of what I'm tasting as I'm going through this. It's a very good bottle battle, I believe. I think if you are into light, crispy, slightly peated whiskey, these two, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. I am leaning towards this one, but I need a little bit of time to go back and forth. I'm going to rinse with my water, A, B, B, A, compare, let my palate settle down, and then jump back in and give you my final thoughts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick a winner. All right, I have a decision. This is fruit forward followed by the subtle amount of peat. There is a crispness. I get light apple, light fruits. This is very delicate. It doesn't have a lasting long finish, but it definitely makes you wanna go back and drink a little bit more. I like the fruity sweetness that is in here over this one, which brings me to this one. The amount of peat that I'm getting out of this glass is almost double this. The ashy peat that is in here is exceptional. Borderline moving into the savory side here. The more I drank this, it got slightly more spicy. So there is a spicy note here that is not in here. I would say that this is a better balanced whiskey than this. It has more layers, more components. 
it develops more from the front of the palette to the back. Everything that I have in this one is elevated. It has more oomph to it, if that makes sense. I'm getting more ABV out of this one than I am this. If you are a heavily peated fan, and when I say heavily peated, take that with a grain of salt. This is not like an Ardbeg 10 or a Laphroaig 10. This is subtle amounts of peat, but compared to this one, this is more heavily peated, if that makes sense. This seems to be a more vibrant, more complex. It develops from the arrival to mid palette to the back, as to this one seems to stay steady the entire time. It is sweeter than this. It has less peat than this. This has a note of a spice that this one doesn't have. Now, as far as my preference go, I can see myself reaching for either one of these depending upon my mood, but because this is a bottle battle, I am going to choose this glass today over this one. And I do believe I have a strong suspicion what they are. This one's not gonna be very tough for me. I do believe that these are going to be the Japanese whiskeys. I am guessing that this is going to be the Hibiki Harmony, and this is going to be the single malt Yoichi. Yoichi? I think it's Yoichi. Let's see how I did, and before I reveal it, if you like this information and you are not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Just go ahead and click on that little uh, notification down in the bottom corner. I believe it's down over here. Turn the bell notification on because I publish videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I think I have my Friday videos all locked in. The first Friday of the month, I'm still gonna be doing my first Friday flight fight, and then I'm going to alternate between my top five bottles and my versus video or the bottle battles. So if that sounds interesting to you, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell notification. If you like these style of videos, go ahead and give me a like. Share this with somebody in the whiskey world that might get enjoyment out of it. Comment down below if you are familiar with either of these whiskeys. Let me know which one you prefer. Now let's go ahead and reveal what I've been drinking. First up, bottle number one on my left. I thought this was the Habiki Harmony and it is the Habiki. And then my second one, obviously I know the sample, so this has to be the single malt Yoichi, which is the single malt Yoichi. So let me go ahead and grab these two bottles so I can give you a little bit of information on them. So here we go, we have the Habiki, and this is coming in at 43% ABV. It is a blend of Japanese whiskeys, and this is coming in at 45% ABV, and this is a Japanese single malt. And the reason why I chose this battle is it's the battle of the Japanese giants, Nika versus Suntory. I understand that this one is a single malt compared to a blend, but I decided to throw this in there because it's the only Japanese whiskeys that I have that are peated. Looking at this, I paid $104, but I do see this maybe $98 in some places. And I think with taxes and everything, be prepared to spend probably a little bit over $100. And this one, I paid 80. $88.99, so with taxes included, this is probably gonna run somewhere around 90. So I think the price range are relatively close, and I selected it for the peatiness in both of them and because of the giants of the whiskey world, Nika and Centauri. Do me a favor in the comments down below, let me know which one you prefer if you've had either one of them. Where do they rank as far as your favorite Japanese whiskeys? And before I get too far in front of myself, let me go ahead and blend these together and see how the blend blends into the single malt. I'm guessing the peat from the single malt Yoichi is gonna come through and it's gonna mix rather well with the crisp pineapple note that I'm getting in here along with the light fruits that I'm getting here. All right, that's promising. That smells really good. The peat note has dropped, so it's not as strong as it was in here. I do get a pineapple crisp apple note as well. And maybe that pineapple note is a young spirit note. Light fruits, touch of spice, vanilla. The spice that I'm getting might be a combination of cinnamon and pepper. And that also could be the combination of the peat notes as well. Let's get it on the palate. Spice, peat, very subdued amount of sweetness. I'm getting a lot of barrel char that wasn't there with the individual components. Bitterness on the side of the tongue. I would say the finish is rather long. There are some Japanese whiskeys that I have in my collection that aren't nearly as good as this blend. As far as the blend goes, 
that's not bad. I know that barrel char that I talked about and the bitterness that may not resonate with everybody, but this gives this a different layer of complexity. I actually like that. It, it's good. I don't think that this one is better than the two of these individually. But like I mentioned, there are some Japanese whiskeys that I have that I like less than this. That's all I have for you today. Do me a favor, enjoy your journey, because I am certainly enjoying mine, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.